And now we want to do a couple of things and we could potentially do a quite a quick little bend or something on this or extend it and do some tapers and things like that. So the first thing we can do is here, and I'm not going to go too much into this, but I'm just going to show you that it's there in the gear icon. This is part of the gizmo. So this is part of like the W key or the move or scale or rotate modes. We've actually got a few things here. One of those is taper. So we click on taper. Now when we click on that, we can actually sort of click on it and taper this in different ways. And if you move up and down, that will give it a different effect. So we can taper it inwards a little bit. And that's not looking too bad for what we want, maybe a bit too much. And this guy will sort of put it in different modes and stuff like that. So I'll get into this later, but that's not looking too bad. And you could taper the other end, for example, and just get it somewhere in the right sort of a place. Another thing you can do is you can actually come across to bend curve. Now bend curve, you move up. So when you hover over them, it should go white. And now you can sort of move that up and down and have do, have it do different effects. This guy here adds more bend curve. So we were actually making kind of like the bend deformer in Maya or a bit like a spline deformer actually. And you can just add one bend deformer and click that middle guy and then drag it and that will actually bend it a little bit. So that's kind of handy. You put a lot more points in and, and things like that and it does some neat things. And there's lots of different techniques for using these things. So they're kind of good to know and learn by themselves, but we're just going to keep moving in this shoot. So there you go. That's just a couple of nice little tools there. I'm actually going to, to get back into the normal move mode. We do have to click that again and go back to Gizmo 3D. So there's a lot of this marking menu type stuff. And I will actually just make it a bit longer and sort of place it down. So it's intersecting into that a little bit better. And we'll move it back with some sculpt tools and whatnot later. So now when we uh, click off that, so we just go Q and that's going to drop it just like back into normal mode. We could do a, a whole bunch of things here. So what I want to do is I want to show you guys that because these are masked, take that off. If we control click in this gray, that's actually going to invert the mask. And now what happens is when we're sculpting and we're going to use the move tool, which is two of my hotkeys. By the way, if you hit any of these guys, it will exit you out of the primitives guys. So just click any of these guys move you out. So we're going to use move. That's two, my hotkeys. Be sure to use the hotkeys as soon as you can. We can come in here and now we can move stuff around. So this is exactly like the grab brush in Maya and we can do a lot of different things there. Now what I want to do is I want to just make this nose sort of match up. So we just bring that back again, Alt G and we just bring him out and you can sort of fill him out and do whatever you need to. So the size of the brush really matters and the different effects that you'll get. And I'm just going to sort of get it roughly right. So the fewer clicks that the nicer your shape will have, generally speaking. So now I can invert that. And now we're working on the cylinder. So the invert, remember that's control click and that will invert. So it's sort of like there's these things in ZBrush which are good to stay in the mask modes until you're absolutely kind of set with it. Now there's other ways of masking too. So we'll get into that. So shift is the smooth mode, just like Maya. So remember the shift can smooth that out. And we're sort of just placing that a tiny bit better. It's not perfect, but there we go. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to actually invert that again and then cut a line here. So I'll show you this quite early. We're in this mode, so we're going to only be working on the unmasked points. And we can do this clip curve thing, so it's nine by default. That's also the quick save hotkey, so I'm going to have to put that on something else. But I'm going to leave that on nine for the time being. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut through that as per the reference. I'm going to leave it a bit wide, but I'll explain that why in a later stage. But we want to sort of cut that line through there. now. A few different ways of doing this and I'm just going to show you this sort of starts introducing power of ZBrush a little bit and we're going to come in switch that guy on go to the side view and we're going to come into the clip curve now it gives this little warning like press the control shift keys and then click to use it and you go okay and what you need to do now is use the control and shift keys and then click and drag in a direction and what that will do is actually remove that section for you so it's just like a bit of a slice and it cuts it and if we have a look at the wireframe what that's done in polyframe mode is it has actually put a ton more points there. So this was our original primitive, it's called a Dynamesh sphere. And so it's a, a little bit weird for my users to look at such a dense mesh like this, but this will all make sense in a little while. And this is the start of the power of ZBrush and just showing you how easily it sort of just automatically figures that out and puts that in there. So I'm just gonna undo that and do it again. It's direction based. So if we go this way with control and shift held, it's actually gonna clip the wrong way. So it clips that end. So we wanna go this way up. And then once you've got it drawn, you can sort of let go and put that anywhere. I'm going to put it there. I'm not going to cut it exactly there. I'm going to eat into that later. I'm just going to leave it a bit wide, but that's the basic idea. 